Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury CC3 bringing you a replay match between Kitan and Perlox. Kitan is one of our better players. He is a. He won the original beta tournament and he is generally considered a formidable player. And Perlox is a much newer player, but apparently he has been growing quite quickly, so it'll be very interesting to see how he plays this game out. So, right now we're watching Perlox. He has chosen Grekum, while Kitan has also chosen Grekum. So, it's a Grekum mirror. This will be interesting. Grekum mirrors typically go down to who can get the better Air Force first. And Village de saint is also a rather resource poor map, which means basically whoever can get more expansions than their opponent sooner will be able to get air units faster and thus secure more expansions and thus win. So that will likely be what decides the game. Perlock's going for a perfect start, trying to get his best perfect start, and unfortunately he is having some issues with the RPs flying around. Well, both players are not starting up as perfectly as they would like, I'm sure. It is still working out decently well. Kitan getting his Octo RPs set up as quickly as possible, and Perlox also has his RPs set up in his main, and he will be getting his Octos set up quickly. So, both players going for the standard economy start. There we go, the four Octos. And Arcticus, actually, Perlox is sending his Arcticus far, far more forward than Kitan is. He appears to be sending it actually to scout entirely, not just sending it to defend, but actually sending it as a scout. Landing it, he's planning to land it inside Kitan's base entirely, not even just Wow, okay, so that's that probably won't succeed unless Kitan decides to move this particular far or this Octo here that's progenning. But that's still pretty ballsy. I don't see it working too well, but at the very least you will see what Kitan is doing and have a scout in there. And here comes the Arcticus, it's still going. So Perlox is going for let's see, seven RPs on LC. Kitan on the other hand has five LPs five LC RPs and three QP RPs, so I would suspect that Kitan is going either for fast Leo class or fast chrono boarding. And given how much he is going for QP, I wouldn't be surprised if chrono boarding is in fact the answer. Getting an Octopod rather quickly as well, he is going to, well, he's going to have quick defense forces. While on the other hand, Perlox is focusing very heavily on economy. He's got nine LCRPs, three QP RPs, so he has a major economy advantage. And that is going to count for a lot. However, Kitan does have a reef set up, and he will be getting tech fairly soon, I'm sure. So, both players are setting themselves up for, well, different stages of the game. Perlox is setting himself up for the late game, trying to get a lot of economy, and see, these Octos here are going also towards hit the bottom left base, so Perlox is definitely trying to set up for the late game, while Kitan is setting up for the mid game, trying to probably get Chrono Porting. He isn't actually going for it yet, but he is getting an Octopod, he is getting an Octo, Probably going to go for a fairly quick rush, and then getting an Octo, however, getting an RP set up. But likely to go for a fairly quick rush, and then from there, set up probably Chrono Porting with the... I mean, he's going fairly low resources, really, when you think about it. This is a typical build for Chrono Rushing, but Chrono Rushing hasn't been effective in a while. Well, Perlox, like I said, is definitely going for a late game play. Perlox is not at all worried about getting attacked in the early game, which on Village Saint Antoine is actually not something you shouldn't be worried about. Village is a pretty small map, and it's very conducive to rushes given the way the, that all the bases are set up. There isn't a lot of money, so usually most players won't invest in the late game. They'll invest in the mid game and then just go for fairly quick attacks and harassment and just try to win that way. Kitan is not going for that. He does have the Octo League, or Octopod, which makes me think he's likely to go for that eventually. And Kitan, however, is getting quick tech. He is getting advanced structures. He is getting a dome from there. Like I said, I'm surprised he's not getting more RPs. He has now seven LC RPs and three QP RPs. And I just would have expected he would have gotten more RPs, because Perlox right now has a great position. He has tons of RPs. He has tons of... Well, he can easily build tons of units. And he really doesn't have... And he has information. He knows what's up. He knows what Kitan is up to. Kitan does not know what Perlox is up to. So this Arcticus here is going to be very helpful. While Perlox is continuing to build up. He's getting the Seppies. He's getting... Probably getting another Triad from here. And... Oh, sorry. That was standing up a Seppie. That was not getting a new one. But he could easily get a new one if he wanted to. Start a new Triad and then work from there. So, that with with that said, Kitan is in a really bad spot right now. 
He's aware of what's going on. He does have reefs. He does have archicuses. He does have domes. He's going definitely for a bubble wrap oriented strategy. And then from here, I would imagine he'd end up get, getting a spire and getting some more units built up. But the problem is, he's going for turtle when Pearlox is going for expand. And the thing is, expand is the counter to turtle. The counter, of course, to expand is to harassment and rushing, but turtling up is actually countered by expansion. Now, of course, in Akron, with if you don't produce as well as you can, a lot of players don't produce as well as they could, it won't work. I mean, having a huge expansion, having tons of resources won't help you. It'll just be stuck in the bank, not really doing much. So it'll be interesting to see how well Perlox is actually able to produce with the resources he's getting. But if he is able to produce quite well, then he has a huge advantage. Though right now he doesn't have a lot of resources, and sorry, he has a lot of resources, doesn't have a lot of units. He doesn't have a lot of production capacity being used. A reef is being set up, will be able to build some tech. And a mound is well being set up, so he's a better vision of the area around him, but once he gets the reef set up, he'll get some tech. This is at 430 mark, by the way, so it's fairly late in the game for what most players do. And of course, now Perlox will be able to see that there is a reef. There is actually two reefs, and he will know what is going on, and that Kitan is definitely going for a more turtley strategy. So Perlox has really nothing to worry about right now. Once Kitan starts to get air units and builds up a bit, then there's a bit of worry. But even then, Kitan has 131, 174. That's a Pharopod. Once he gets the Spire up, there's the Spire right there. That's a Pharopod, maybe. Now the Arcticus is being sent to his death. Perlox is not really caring about it. So not really worried about too much about production or about command, although admittedly building another Faro is not hard to do. And building another Arcticus is about as expensive as an RP. So it's not really a huge loss. Advanced Rush is being researched, by the way. He just needs another Faro, and then from there he'll be able to build just another Arcticus or another couple Arcticuses. Though the Arcticus, he is actually saving the Arcticus ultimately, setting it up in the expansion. The Octopod, the Oct yeah, Octopod will kill it. I keep want to say Octoligo. That's an Octopod, not an Octoligo. Octoligo is much bigger and darker and kill you faster. But Octoligos kill you slower, they'll still kill you. In terrifying, horrifying ways. And here comes Legal Class. So, Perlox is going for fast Legal Class. He is getting a Spire. He will be able to get at least three or four Farpods, Epipods right away, which he probably will do. Kitan, on the other hand, is getting Legal Class, but he doesn't have the... He does have Farpod coming in. He has another Octopod coming in. He's getting the Legal Class, but he's not got the resources to really push it. While Kitan can just go. He can really build a ton of units right now. He doesn't have to worry at all about anything for resources. He has tons of resources. He can just build and build and build. Unless he's saving up for chronoporting, which I kind of doubt, he can easily just go for this and just attack. Get five or six pods, just attack. Or pods, if pods, but really pods all he needs right now. There's no air units coming in except the other pod, and maybe a pod or two could help, but really, he's in a great spot right now. One Farapod is coming up right now, but Perlox has the Corona Energy to just build a ton of them. He does have a bunch of production in the future, or in the relative future to him, so we'll see what happens from there. Kitan, on the other hand, he has Seppi Ligos coming in, so like I said, getting fast, or relatively fast Ligo, well, actually slow Ligo class, 641, not terribly fast Ligo. But that was his main build, and I'm really surprised he didn't focus on more on economy, really, because Perlox, like I said before, Perlox is a minute behind and could have legal class units right now. Actually, he's going to get a second Lego a minute before Kitan does, but he'll be able to get at least three or four second Legos for Kitan getting one. Actually, Kitan has already built a second Lego, my mistake, but he will. But regardless, that second Lego is going to be able to build or be built multiple times over for Perlox. And that made no sense. What I meant to say was multiple second Legos can easily be built for Perlox right now. I'm a bit surprised he's not going for it, but that is what he could do. Let's see, is there going to be... There is! Far Ligo is coming up. Actually, not Sepi Ligo. Far Ligo. And another Far... So, multiple Far Ligos instead of Sepi Ligos. I would recommend having one Sepi Ligo at least, or maybe a couple Sepi Pods. But it doesn't look like he's going for that. He's going for Far Ligos, and he's sticking to it. So, Sepi Ligo will be coming in and able to tell able to deal with this quite effectively. But like I said, Titan is very low on cash. He's not got a lot of resources, he's not got a lot of anything coming in. And there's of course Sepi Ligo coming in attacking the bottom left expansion and the, another Sepi Ligo in the base at the 732 mark, while Perlox has his Far Ligos coming up, or will have them coming up very soon. And of course he can get more Sepi Ligos or Sepi Pods, whatever he wants really. He has the resources to do it, or just a ton of Sepis, which actually be a good idea right now, is just get like a dozen or so Seppies just to 
walk around the map killing everything while killing all the air units that are coming in. Though the Autobots do, do make this a bit harder because Seppies aren't good against ground. But still, Seppies with Far Oligos, Far Paws, that would be a pretty good mix if you can keep them together, which is difficult to do, so not the best overall. But still, Prolox is actually not producing as well as he could. Like I said before, that is the key right now. He has the resources. All he needs to do is use the production capacity he has, and he'll be in a great spot. His Arcticus, by the way, has gone over to the top right expansion, having got the information it needed. Going to the top right expansion can be used from there to rebuild, well, to build more units and build another triad, get more RPs. I'm just a bit surprised. Here's an, another Octoleo coming, or an Octoleo coming in, not even a Sepuligo. An Octoleo coming in. I'm still surprised he hasn't gone for Sepuligos. It's... I'm I'm very surprised he has not gone for Sepuligos, because with Grekum versus Grekum, like I said before, air is huge. Though admittedly, Kitan is only going for a couple Sepi Legos, he's not going for Sepi Pod, Faro Pod, Death Ball. Air is still really big. And now from Kitan's point of view, he does have... He does see the Faro Faro Legos coming in, and one of the Sepi Legos is about to die. The other Sepi Legos will kill the Faro Legos, but the Faro Legos won't last long after this. So two Faro Legos down for the cost of one Sepi Legos. That was not worth it. I I mean, Perlox really can't change that attack right now. He does have Octo Legos coming in, which are very effective against everything. They are, however, slow. That's the one problem. So, Perlox... I mean, it's not a terrible idea to get them, but really, get Sepi Legos. Get a Sepi Ligo or two. Just just to have flying around the map, scouting around. Possibly get Corona Porting as well, but maybe not, since there's not a lot of QPRPs. But definitely get Sepi Legos. And attach these to an Arcticus, because that... You, you aren't going to need that. You don't have much Corona Energy left, and really should be jumping towards the future to macro towards the future. Anyway, the Octoligo is coming back here to help defend this expansion. They should be able, they should be fine. Should be able to just destroy everything in there right now. And Perlox is getting Chrono Porting, actually. He's, he is definitely going for that. Likely going to be sending these Octoligos in and then Chrono Porting them back to have defended the expansion sooner. Not a bad strategy, considering that Octoligos are really slow. Chrono Porting is a great way to make up for their speed. Or lack thereof. More Octoligos coming in. And another Arctic is coming up as well. So... He's actually building multiple Arcticus. I don't know if he's forgotten the Arcticus in the top right corner, because I would... I am almost imagine he has, given that he's not building anything from it, and he's not using it to command anything. It would seem likely he's forgotten about it. However, what we're worried about right now is the Octoligo is coming in right now. We'll be chronoporting very soon. The chronoport tech is almost done. As another, like, five seconds to go, and... Once that's done, these Octopods will... Or Octoligos will be in a great spot. However, they're not in a great spot right now. They need to be... They're actually... One of them slightly out of position, so it got got the brunt of the counter... Or, brunt of the attack that was coming in. But, Corona Porting will occur right now. And... What? Oh, no, it looks like... It looks like the Octoligos that were being built inside Perlox's base are the ones being Corona Ported, rather than the ones... Yeah, these Octoligos right here appear to be the ones that were Corona Ported, rather than the Octoligos inside the expansion that are actually defending rather odd way of doing it. I'm surprised he did it that way instead of chronoporting these guys back. Because chronoporting these guys would have meant, I mean admittedly they are getting heavily damaged, but chronoporting these guys would have meant that it would be able to stop the attack sooner having, and would have actually saved the expansion rather than having to chronoport back here and then walk all the way to the expansion. But we'll see once the blue time wave comes along what's ultimately happened from there. Titan, however, his folks a bit further in the future. Attacking with the Sepi Ligos on the main base. Octoligos coming in. These are the Octoligos that were Chrono Ported back, by the way. So in the red time wave, they are behind the red time wave. They are not. But Titan is able to deal a ton of damage. The Sepi Ligos are just ripping things apart. And Prolox has apparently encountered some system issues at the same time, which is unfortunate. But Prolox hit. The blue time wave is his best bet. And even then, he is getting a lot of damage. He's receiving a lot of damage from that blue time wave. Oh, see this, all this flashing red here. That's damage he has received that he did not see coming. And, oh, the Octoligos went to the main base! Okay, they didn't even go behind. They went to the main base where a ton of base class units were waiting for them to kill them. And while doing a valiant job trying to defend and destroy the base class units, that's not what he needs to worry about. What he needs to worry about was right here. I'm just surprised he didn't turn over back to the Octoligos to have defended this base sooner and actually have saved the base. And it looks like these Octoligos will never get Chronoport back, actually. The Chronoport... Yeah, the Chronoport... Departure. No, sorry, the Chronoport Departure was just so long ago. This is actually, this is the Chronoport Departure right here. It's just that these Octoligos, of course, like I said, are very slow. So the time it took them to actually get there. 
and also the fact that it was on the time we were waiting the Unplayable Pass meant that we didn't really see it until the Chronoport departure had fallen well into the Unplayable Pass. So that's the departure. The Chronoport is still consistent, but I don't see it mattering too much. This Octoligo is doing some damage, but really, this is what's the problem. These two separate Egos are the problem, and Perlox does not have the resources to actually deal with them anymore. He had that for a while, but he spent it on Far Legos, which both died, and Octoligos, which all died, ultimately not doing too much to actually help out. So, really, right now, he could build some Sepi... Well, he could have built some Sepi Pods. He's building Octos for some reason. I'm not sure what Perlox is trying to do right now. It's... He... I'm not sure if he's just resigned to having lost his base or what, but he is... He is damaging Chitin's base heavily. However, Chitin has already used his base. He's already made it effective. He doesn't need to worry about it too much. So I'm really not sure what the effect of this would be. While Chitin, of course, further in the future has, at this point in time, 1408 mark, has pretty much destroyed Perlox's base. So, like I said before, this does come down to who has air control, and Perlox did not get air control. He focused heavily on ground control, on either destroying ground or on having the most powerful ground units. But not enough on air control. And actually, one thing that's kind of surprising, now that I think about it, why didn't he just lift off the pod class triad? If he lifted off the pod class triad, he would have had at least some increased defense against the Sibley Goes. Nothing great, but it would have been better. Well, partially. It would have been better at, with the right positioning, but supported by more Sepi pods and such. Really, it's a tough situation regardless. I'm just surprised he didn't go for the extra attack power. They wouldn't have lasted long, but they may have lasted long enough. That's the only thing. Doesn't matter, the Octoligo has ultimately died, and the Faropod and Sepipod, sorry, Faropod and Octopod on Chitin's base, not really doing much but defense, and they do defense quite well. So Perlox is falling apart, his main base has been destroyed from Chitin's point of view, and he really doesn't have much to do about it a minute before Chitin actually, well, a minute before Chitin, which is what Chitin is seeing, and what Chitin is seeing is very good for Chitin. So now, Perlox has pretty much lost the base, both bases he had. Chitin, however, still not expanding a whole lot. He doesn't have a lot of resources. He managed to get away with not having a lot of resources by using them really wisely. Like I said, if Perlox had spent the resources on Sepi, Sepi Legos and Sepi Pods instead of Faro Legos and Octo Legos, he would have had a much better time just dominating the map, getting air control, and then ultimately winning. He had more resources early on. He would have been able to just take out the Sepi Legos, and then from there he would have been able to completely dominate. But he didn't. Which is kind of unfortunate. And I mean, Sepi Legos and Sepi Pods. Sepi Pods would have been a great LC sync, and Sepi Legos would have been just great in general. But unfortunately, he did not. And so, Perlox really does not have much of a chance right now. He's trying to build what he can, getting Octos straight out of the Arcticus, trying to get more LC, but really what he needs right now is. What he'd need is a triad, Sepi and Faro, or any pair, and then work from there. And it looks like. He is getting a Sepi with the Octo, so at the very least he will have the ability to create Faros and then from there create a Triad. Still, Chitin is in a great spot. Chitin right now really doesn't have much to worry about. He has Sepi Legos. He's not really producing, I guess he doesn't have much to... He's not even thinking that anything bad's gonna happen, really. I mean, he has a Sepi Legos, just needs to kill everything from there, and then he's won, as far as he knows. And really, that's pretty much the case. Once the Sepi Legos come in and kill everything, it's... It's done. Like... There's really not much that Chitin needs to do. So, let's see, where's Perlox going from here? Perlox continuing to build up. He's continuing to build up at the top. He's got his Seppi in progen mode. The other two are just hanging around, not doing much yet. But really, there is no way that Chitin can lose from here. There really isn't. Chitin has a massive economy advantage. He has a massive unit advantage. He has, he has everything, really. So... I'm just going to call it right now. I mean, Chitin has won. And that's that's all there is to it. So, well done to Chitin, since... I'm not sure if this replay actually works, to be honest. It may have. Regardless, well done to Chitin, since he's pretty much won the game. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll be seeing you guys later.